Welcome back to FTB Infinity, I'm CZ Survivor and today I've got a few things planned, we're going to be messing around with Britannia unfortunately we've got no screen blast because life's complicated I've had an interview at Manchester University today that's the main reason why along with some few other things so yeah now you may notice that in front of you things have changed so before we get on to Britannia there's a few things I'm going to go over with as well as the wheat farm that I did last episode, partly, that I said I'd finish off and explain this episode. So yeah, so I made, I think I made another Gamori Alice, I don't think I had the two, I think I only had the one. Basically they produce mana from food and I've also got this Entropinium, which takes TNT explosions, I do believe it works with any explosion, and converts them into mana with zero destruction. Although if you are to light one now and it explodes because the Entropidium still has mana, it well, can't consume the energy from it and well, that energy has to go somewhere and that energy is towards the environment. Um, to get the TNT, well I brought over my sand and gravel and cobblestone generator so I can produce it and I have this horribly horrific crowd stabilized flood duct connection. Yeah, mildly overkill and I brought some more thermal electric generators over. So yeah, that's another thing. Now this, it's, I like, it's quite clever to be honest, I think. So we've got a sprinkler at the back, powered by the Aquas accumulator. Basically it just speeds up growth, nice and simple. Uh, we've got the harvester sludge running over to the sludge boiler, as you can probably guess. It's produced a piece of gravel. Wow. Yeah, it's not really producing much. So anywho, that's just to dispose of the sludge and still get stuff out of it. So power over here is being produced by the culinary generator. So you can't really see what's going on here, but I'll try and explain. So we've got a heart and energy cell. We have a comparator, reading it. Um, this is from Project Red Integration. Now, if you look inside the energy cell, you might be able to see the word in, that's from the comparator. In is where it reads, out is where it outputs, and neg and pause, that's for doing some math stuff. I could probably done it here, made things a little smaller, but this is only a temporary setup. So out comes a signal, which runs along over to here, which activates this thing. Now, this thing is very interesting. So, this is an item translocator. You have to put two on, and there are two items on this one. There is redstone and diamond. Diamond acts as a regulator. So I want this translocator to keep inside this inventory one toast. And the redstone, as you can probably guess, it's redstone operator. So when this signal turns off, that button there will fall in and a piece of toast will hop through. Nice and simple. Also, what the heck's that? Why is... You just spitting stuff out now? I might change the wire, wiring so I make sure items go like that. A bit weird. Uh, I think I'll go do that just to be safe. I've noticed that happened a few times. But anywho, so seeds go in here, and wheat comes down into here. Now I've got some cyclic assemblers. You should be filtering whitelist. Okay, right. I need to do a. F okay, there's still some errors in this. I need to add a blacklist here of seeds. But anyway, so seeds go into here primarily. They then fail safe into this. Into here goes wheat, which gets crafted into flour. That flour then goes into this redstone furnace, gets cooked into bread. Now this redstone furnace contains a food doubler and lowers um, fuel costs, lowers energy costs which then goes into here and becomes toast and goes into culinary generator producing power which is pretty nice so I'm gonna go get a filter I think I still have one I think it's recipe crafts two at a time yep that'll make sense mm. I have done that oh I also got a cow because I needed a cake for a rune to make the entropinium anywho so just quickly show you how this works you stick this on here Right click on it, you've got whitelist and blacklist. Whitelist is only allow this item in. Blacklist, do not allow this item in, but allow every other item in. So, for example, this filter will not allow 
seeds in, but let's say for some reason, somehow, miraculously, raw chicken got in there. And it, it did hop straight into the cyclic assembler. Over here, I have a whitelist on seeds saying, hey, only seeds can go in here. Which, to be honest, I don't really need since this is locked to only allow seeds. So I think I'll yank this away. Right, so the first thing I want to do now is mess around with end storage, making it easy to return items back to the AE network. So there's two things we need. We need a ender pouch and an ender chest. So first of all, let's have a look at the ender uh, chest. I guess that's a space, yep, space. And um, for item return, I think we'll use white, white, white. Uh, oh. Helps if I actually have some wool. Good. And this will create us an end chest. I do have all these items scanned. Good. Next of all, we need a ender pouch which is crafted like that. We're going to need another piece of wool. Think. And so. Oh, we're missing blades. Uh, we have two. Uh, oof, I don't really want to use this because it's already in use. Uh, oh, it doesn't matter. I can get more blaze rods. It's not too hard to get blaze rods, to be honest. Right, so we got an end pouch. Um, because I love scanning things, let's get the formal meter out and scan everything. Quite a complicated object, to be honest. So, I'm also going to want a import bus. And I just want an emmy import bus, so we need a sticky piston, which requires a piston. I think I just crafted the thing. Yep. And I think I have the other item. Yep, I do. That's an annihilation core. Sounds destructive. And um, we need. Um, actually, we both need one. So let's throw this down and scan it. If you haven't figured out that by now, everything needs to be scanned that's new. I'm going to put it down here. Network Apprentice. Now that is telling me that this network has reached capacity. Now I'll explain that in a second once I've set down the inner chest. So these two things are linked. This ender pouch is white, white, white. This ender chest is white, white, white. Now an easy way to link a pouch to an ender chest, you just uh, shift, yeah, shift click on the chest and it will copy over the colours of the chest onto the pouch. And to change the chest, you can either use a different coloured wool, which will make all of them that colour when you're crafting it, or you can apply dyes to these three segments here. You can see that they're actually highlighted separately. If you, the, you might be able to see, I don't know, it depends on the resolution you're watching this video in. So, anywho, so over to the network now. A network can hold eight channels by default. Now, a channel is basically something that uses or tra well transmits data for example a storage bus will transmit data it is accessing stored items an import bus will that transmit data um, a emmy crafting terminal transmits data an emmy drive transmits term data but a inscriber that's just power same goes for the energy acceptor now on here uh, one two three four five six seven eight items the capacity now to increase that capacity you need to use an emmy controller for now we don't have to worry about that i'll get onto that in a future episode so we now have this end pouch and the purpose for that is well if i go into here and let's say oh i was carrying these apples i don't want these apples Bye bye. It will slowly get consumed and put into the A network. Unfortunately, that's not very fast to be honest. So let's make some cards. Be more precise, acceleration cards. Um, 
I don't know how many it actually accepts. Oh. And I'm missing the items. Right, I'll go craft all the items. How many can this take? This thing can take one, two, three, four cards. Right, so you know how slow it is consuming these items. Pretty slow. If we put this acceleration cards on, that is considerably faster. And if that's not fast enough for us, well, I could just hook up another ME import bus and put more acceleration cards in. Can't do that at this point, as you can probably guess, because, well, we're out of space on the network. Right, so one thing that sounds very interesting to start messing around in Britannia is the Ring of Magnetization, which will basically suck items towards you, which sounds like it has a lot of potential. So having a look at the recipe, we need four mana steel and this mana lens of magnetizing, which requires iron and gold and a mana lens which requires four mana steel a glass pane or a glass block well since i'm super efficient i'll go for glass pane uh, one two um now i'm going with two because i need to make one for me and screen blast um uh i need 18 iron and gold should be two So if we just drop that in there, I love that noise, that noise is oddly satisfying. So first of all I need to put you there, mm. probably didn't need to even take the items out of here, uh, you, then you, 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 and you, we'll put you in there ring uh, lens of magnetization and then we just need a magnetization and there's a greater version of this a more powerful ring but for now i think we should be good with the current run um i'll put one in here and we can have a look at how this works so it goes in our bauble ring slot in an artist i do believe that's for equipping a batania item in the bauble slot so let's see we throw it on the floor now there's a five second delay before it'll pick up items okay and then it sucks into you which is pretty nice it also has that cool particle effect so this means that uh let's see let's get down some stone let's see i'm working on here it's just like yink 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 straight into the inventory and what very good feature considering we're working in the void let's say i yank out one of these cables for argument's sake without the ring it's very easy for it to fall down into the thing but with the ring that was easy it picked it up which is a very nice feature it can add some complications in some cases for example when you're doing this i I think they I think the model for actually changed mm. something. I'll have to test it, and I'll tell you in the future whether it does or does not. Right. So one of the main goals in Britannia is to create a portal to Alfheim. Now I'm going to start working on this now, and work on the items that we need for this. Okay. Now we need Terra Steel. Ooh, Terra Steel. We haven't made that yet. Let's have a look how we make Terra Steel. Terra Steel. Terra Steel is a complex magical alley infused with great amounts of mana, yada yada yada. And we need a terrestrial agglomeration plate, which requires water, earth, mana, earth, and fire. So the four elements total aspects like water earth fire and earth for what work is in the four elements and then mana makes sense so let's have a look what rooms we have well we have water we have an earth we have an earth oh we're just missing fire and mana <laughs> that's pretty easy. Right, I'll go make these two other runes. One thing that you might not know is you can actually throw in blocks to be converted. So I'm throwing in a block of iron to get a block of mana steel. 
which is actually for a reason because we need it for the terrestrial agglomeration plate. Now we also need a few other things. So let's look. So this is a multi-block structure, as you can see. Now, oops, wrong button. Uh, oops, I don't know what I pressed. Um, Terra steel. Let's have a look for the thing again. So this is. Oh, the visualizer. That might be a good thing to show you. So let's have a look how this works. Um, we're going to need to throw mana at this thing, so I think we'll stick it over. Uh, are we throwing? Is that in the floor? No, I wanted one up. Right, click on a block to anchor this structure. Do I. One second. Let's just try something. Oh, wait, will it work? That sinks it into the ground, okay. Uh, let's just. Nope, wrong button. Let's visualize and let's try visualizing again. Oops. Okay, I'm new to this thing, to be honest. Uh, let's put it there. Then let's get rid of that. So in the center, I think it's mana stone. Not mana stone, living rock. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And we're gonna need some lapis for them. Um, like so. Um, let me just detonate another TNT. I need a lot of mana for this. You actually need about half a mana pool. Uh, not quite at that point yet. So that like that. Lapis light, light there. And the terrestrial agglomeration plate and structure complete, which is a wonderful feature. I love it. So we need a mana pearl, a mana steel ingot, and a mana diamond. So let's have a look how much mana we have in here. Nowhere near enough. So that's telling me that I need to work on an automated way to produce a lot of mana. But unfortunately, we're going to have to leave that for next episode because I don't have enough time to do it in this episode with time left for the episode and literal time as in before I need to release this video. So what I'll do between this episode and next is work in a test world to come up with something that is functional and will do what I want. And then once I've done that, we'll build it next episode maybe, or the episode after. I know Screen Blast really wants to get back to the Twilight Forest. He really enjoys his exploration mods. Good thing is, we do have Dungeoneering mod in here. An entire dimension dedicated to Dungeoneering. But anywho, I digress. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed. If you did so, hit that like button. Got any comments or questions, drop them down in the comment section below. I'll answer if possible. New channel, why don't you hit that subscribe button to stay up to date. Stay well, and survive out.